really yeah. good. I'm going to be here. Hi, everyone. Happy, happy Wednesday. <laughs> We're just laughing about the fact that um, this man is still in his pants and uh, making a lot of noise about it. And I'm really glad I'm over here because that means I'm going to change it. Ha! <laughs> um, hopefully you're all OK. Everybody's all well. We're going to do a block today. Um, but first of all, we've got a daily deal. Um, we've got mystery fabric boxes back on. OK, there's 30 of them. Um, they are over £20 worth of fabric for £10, basically half price. The mystery fabric boxes, they're in the daily deal. They have activated. I know a couple of people have already found them. I've never even told you about them because I activated them about 12 o'clock. Um, a few of you have already found them. So, um, so yeah, um, there's only 30 of them though, ladies. So if you want a mystery box, go grab them. Go grab them on the website. Um, uh, what else? Hopefully... I'm not all pixelated, well mind you, I maybe need to be pixelated today because I'm tired. Um, but, um, and I got drenched in the rain earlier, so my hair's all a mess as well. Um, hopefully we're not pixelated today. Hopefully you're coming through loud and clear and um, yeah, and everything's okay because we're back in the house and not on the shop Wi-Fi and stuff. So sorry about that yesterday. It's just one of those things. It was all, all crazy yesterday and I don't know why it wasn't working properly, but... Never mind. We are going to be doing today a Hunter's Star, okay? And the lovely, lovely Kathleen has lent me her Hunter's Star quilt top, okay? It's not quilted yet. Because she doesn't like the quilting part. She likes the piecing bit, not the quilting part. She actually did this using an Accu quilt. Um, oh, sorry. I think all my notifications are still live. Right. Yeah. Switch the so. cameras over again. Pardon? Switch cameras over when I tried to turn off. Oh, they got a full full face of you, just, did they? Just a chin. <laughs> um, so this is Kat, the lovely, lovely Kath has lent me this, um, so you guys could see a full hunter star. Um, it's it's beautiful. She used an Accu quilt um, to do this. Um, she's got one, and you can buy the templates. You know, they're like die cutting machines. Um, you know, and she used that for this. Um, we're going to do an easy version, so it looks like this. But it's it's not the same method. Okay, you've got no like Y seams or anything. You've got no odd matches. But this is um, yeah, it's stunning. She did an absolute amazing. She's an amazing quilter anyway. I mean, so her point work. Yeah, you know, her points are always perfection. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? So who's coming online today before we get started? Well, we got Leslie. We have got Carol, Angela, uh, Liam, Linda. Hi. Grace, Marion. Oh, lots and lots of you. Hi everybody, lovely, lovely, nice to see you. Uh, hopefully, like, yeah, I said, we're, we're not pixelated today. Um, one other thing before we get sewing is, um, we were donated this one. So House of Sandra, they do these amazing quilt kit, uh, felt kits. Um, it is hand sewing, um, but I thought we'd give it away as like a little challenge post, because um, we were donated it. It's uh, the Nosy Goose, um, but he's beautiful. Really, really lovely, comes out quite big as well. He is, you've got everything in there. You've got all your pattern, you've got even got your wadding, you've got all your felt, all your bits and pieces and all in there. Um, full pattern and instructions on how to do them and stuff. So um, I thought I'd give this, give this, we'd give this one away. So um, we're going to do a quick challenge, we'll do a challenge post, which I'll put back on when we get over there. Um, and we'll do it on stars. Have we done stars before? I'm thinking because we're doing a hunter's star today. We've done stars. Oh no, I don't know. Uh, no, maybe not. Well, maybe we won't do stars. What should we do the challenge post on, groups? What should we do? Geese. Um, geese. Ge well, no, geese is very specific. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to, have, you know, have to have been made something very specific to have the challenge post as geese. Um, oh, weddings. There we go. Because we've got the wedding coming up on Monday. Um, show me stuff that you've made for weddings um tell me about your wedding did you make stuff for it i actually made all the lace for my first wedding dress because i used to make bobbin lace and i made something like 25 meters to go all the way around my first my first wedding dress so you know um we'll do a challenge post on weddings so it could be that you've made a ring ring cushion you've made a wedding dress you made bridesmaids dresses you made a wedding quilt you've done a double wedding ring quilt um you've i don't know um uh, made masks for a bride in your life in the last few weeks um so anything with wedding themed okay so that's what we'll do the challenge post on and we'll give this one away okay so groups can you pop that back over there 
So any questions, comments, anything there today? Wendy says hi. Hi, Wendy. Uh, I saw you earlier in the shop. <laughs> Second time today. Um, so this is this is an odd little block, the Hunter Star block. It comes out. I'm gonna show, hang on. Let me just let me just very quickly press this one. Very quickly press one. Are we okay pixelation wise today? Is anybody anybody worried about the buffering and stuff? If we got it all back under control today. Anybody so. saying anything? Think no. It's okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, Leslie, does does it have to be sewing as uh, sewing related for the challenge post? No. No. Something wedding related. You know, did you make, you know, four hundred wedding invites because you're a paper crafter? Um, you know, did you crochet a wedding shawl? You know, any sort of cra crafting related, but not necessarily sewing related. Okay. So the this little um this little block ends up looking like this, which doesn't look much like a hunter's star. Okay, you have to make four of them minimum of these blocks and put them together for the star to appear. Okay, they're one of those ones that you just look at and go, "What the flip? That's not that's not going to work. What's going on?" But it's one of the ones that it's your secondary pattern. You know, we talk about how secondary patterns happen with quilt blocks. Your secondary pattern actually creates the pattern. Okay. Um, I found this little method. Um, there's five or six. <coughs> Sorry, chest is still, my asthma is still bad. Um, there's one well, more than that. There were lots and lots of different versions of this out there. But I thought I'd take you through this way. Because for each one of these, you need eight half square triangles. And then just two plain ones but found an easy way to make half square triangles make eight at a time so there is a formula and i've written it down okay so that you guys can um work it out <laughs> first thing you need to do is decide what your finished size of half square triangle is so for this one i chose to do three and a half inch unfinished three inch finished OK, so they before I sew them all together, they're three and a half inches. But then when they're all sewn in, they're three inch. So that's my finished size. OK, you double that. You times it by not you don't double it. <coughs> you times it by two. So if my finished size is three times it by two, six inches. OK, I'm then going to add on one and three quarter inches. So the squares that I need to cut are seven and three quarters. If, um, oh, I'll do it again for you. Hmm. Ah, that's where that went. I wonder where that had gone. Just found a list that uh, I knew I'd written. So, um, if you want them to be six and a half, so if you were doing really big half square triangles, like really big half square triangles, so they'd be six and a half unfinished, wouldn't they? So six inch finished. Sorry, I can't write it upside down. I'll try and do this. So I'd times this by six. So you do six times two would be 12. And then you'd add on one and three quarters. And it doesn't matter what measurement this is. The formula is always the same. OK, so I would be 13 and three quarters for those. OK, if I want them to be two inch finished, little tiny ones. So it'd be two by two is four plus one and three quarters. So you'd cut your squares at five and three quarters. So basically the formula always is times two plus one and three quarters inches. OK, so you can then work it out what you want to do. All right. What, what size you want to make this quilt? I just chose three and a half as a you know, middle of the road type size. OK, so I have cut myself two seven and three quarter inch squares. Now, um, Hunter Stars are traditionally done in two colours, a light and a dark, you know, a red and a cream or a red and a, you know, a cream and a blue, or I've done it here, you know, cream and charcoal. You can absolutely play around with that. You know, there's no quilt police, play around with it, do them scrappy, you know, make four all in one colour and then make four in another colour and four in another colour or patterns or whatever. Um, it's just traditional to do them in two colours, but you can absolutely do them how you want. OK, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make eight half square triangles out of these two squares. 
sorry i haven't drawn breath have i i haven't drawn breath at all um any questions any comments there lovely no jean answered the question for us oh right okay <laughs> what was that um susan i was just wondering what name of the block was it's a hunter's star and this is the easy version with no y seams or anything <coughs> sorry excuse me so i've put my two squares one light one dark right sides together and we're going to draw some lines okay so i'm going to go diagonally across there like this now this method does not give you very much wiggle room at all okay you are not going to get much wiggle room you need to do a scant quarter of an inch when we're sewing okay and i'll explain that now when i get over to the sewing machine um there's there's no real squaring up with this you know normally with hard square triangles i go bigger and square them up there isn't doing the this eight by eight method there is no no space for um squaring up not really you've got to be really really quite accurate with it i suppose you could go up if you really wanted to like you i could have gone up to eight inches and squared them all um but I thought I'd be good and actually do the method to the exact measurements for a change. <laughs> so next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch down both sides of these lines. OK, I'm going to go to the machine. I'm going to explain what I mean by a scant quarter for those of you who don't know. <coughs> I'm sorry, you really have to excuse my coughing. My asthma is really bad at the moment. It's not great. So I've got my quarter inch foot on okay now normally my machine sits at 3.5 and that's dead center okay so that if, when i put the guide along there i've got my quarter of an inch which is what i want normally but with a scant quarter i want to knock it over what i mean by that i mean knock the needle over just by one so i've moved my the width of my stitch to four now double check. So I then double check to make sure that my needle wasn't hitting my foot and it's not. I can't go more than four. I couldn't go to 4.5. Um, I can only go to four. But that gives me just that little tiny bit of wiggle room by doing that scant quarter so that when I have folded them over, they came out the right size. OK, so scant quarter of an inch down both sides of the diagonals. Any questions, comments there while I'm uh, doing this? And you do want to concentrate and really keep that guide on the line with this one. Because like I said, there isn't wiggle room with the, the measurements. Okay. Any, anybody there? Anybody no, have no chat no, groups? No questions at the moment. No? Any comments? Anybody telling me anything? Right. Anybody come up with a wedding thing yet for the challenge post? Uh, Lynn said I did my different Baltics and whites and each large block is four different colours and white. Ah, nice. Oh, if you've got a picture, lovely, pop it on Giggler so we can see. I'd love that. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh you put him down for two seconds. <laughs> so I've gone down quarter, scant quarter on this side and scant quarter on the other. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Thread was caught. Um, yeah, if you've done this, if you've if you've done a hunter's star before, um, and you've got pictures of it, please do put them onto Gigglers so people can see different colour variations and stuff. That would be lovely. Yeah, you could play around with that. Yeah, I like that idea of playing around with the big block. So what what ends up being this bit, you know, um, that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? You could play around with that, make that piece as well. But, I mean, this is quite quick to put together. It's quite easy to put each quarter together. So once you've kind of, I would make one, one like this, and then you can start playing around with it. So get the idea in your head, and then go from there. Oh, <coughs> everything is hay fever, asthma, and it's driving me potty. Don't iron it, not if you've used a Frixon pen. <laughs> not till afterwards, because you need those lines. Okay, so. First things we want to do is we're going to make four cuts. We're going to go vertically through the centre, horizontally across there, and then we're going to cut up the diagonals. If you do these ones first, it's a lot easier to keep it all in place. Now, if you've got a turning cutting mat, perfect for this, because you don't want to move the fabric. You're going to turn yourself, not the fabric. So I'm going to cut. Oh, 
can I keep that straight? So that where that point there meets, I don't know if you can see that, where that point there meets, and can you see where those lines of threads cross there and there? I don't know if Drew can get that in. Got it? That's where I'm going to cut through. I want to line up along there. Okay. So I'm going to line my ruler up on there. And then I'm going to double check and make sure that my horizontal is lining across there as well. So just double check that it's all nice and straight there, all the way down there and across. I'm going to stand up so that I can move around and make my first cut. Cut up through there. Lift. Okay, don't move the fabric, move yourself. And then I'm going to do the horizontal. So again, I'm looking for those same marks. There, there and there. Line at the top and the bottom as well. So I know that it's all square as I'm cutting. And then once I've done that one, I can do down the diagonals. And I've just remembered I haven't done that chart for you for the 32 at one time. I'm sorry, it's been a little bit crazy the last few weeks with with wedding and chanda and everything I've, it's got it went completely out of my head it's there waiting for me to type up i will i will do it i will try and get it done um, and then across there like that okay so we've now got eight half square triangles right and that's what you need you need eight for one block okay so for one quarter block that's what you need Iron them to the dark side so away we go. We're just going to press these out. So while I'm pressing these out, please do talk to me, ladies. Anybody there? Anybody having a chat? Angela was asking what the Giggle of Geckos is. The Giggle of Geckos, it's our social page. Um, so it's on Facebook. Um, if you search the Giggle of Ge Gigglers of Ge sorry, the Giggle of Geckos um, and ask to join. Um, it's a really lovely social page. The ladies on there are fantastic. They're really friendly. Everybody kind of posts pictures of what they've been making, chat about all sorts of things. It's a re really nice little group. It's a, it's a joy to uh, spend time in there, actually. It's lovely. Um, you know, people maybe ask advice about stuff or just share stuff they've made. But yeah, have a little look and um, ask to join if you'd like to. Here we go. So I've ironed all those out. Oh, ow, that's really hot. Okay, and I was trying to show you now, there is literally, it's dog ears, and that's it, which is why we did that quarter of an inch, uh, scant quarter. Can you see, if I put my 40, like normally we'd square all these up, wouldn't we, and trim them down, but there's nothing. So I'm just going to trim this one just very quickly. Now, I wouldn't bother to square them up, really. It's, it's nothing. I mean, you can square them because at least it gets rid of the dog ears. But half the time, that is all you're doing is getting rid of that dog ear like that. There's nothing there to cut off. OK, so you do have to be a weeny bit accurate with these. Um, you know, be, you, with your careful with your sewing rather than normally with half square triangles. You know, I, we give ourselves quite a lot of leeway, don't we? So we can square them up. But this time, not so much. It's tiny, ridgy little bits. So... So anybody got anything to tell me? Anybody there? Anybody having a chat? I'm just going to cut the dog ears off all of these and then we're going to put it all together. Mary says, always get confused when the pattern asks for scant quarter and how to set up machine. Okay, so with the scant quarter, when you put your quarter and inch foot on, when you, uh, what, you need to know where your centre is on your machine. So like for me, when I turn my machine on, my needle goes right to the middle. Some don't, some go to the left. But what you want to do is look for where it's in the middle. So for me, that's on 3.5, okay? That's the very middle. A scant quarter is basically um, like a thread's worth less than a quarter. I don't know if I can, you'll be able to see it on here. So if I have a look at this, can you see? It's, it's like 1 32nd of an inch smaller. It's literally like one thread's worth smaller than a quarter of an inch and i i achieve that by knocking out you know i'm moving my needle width over by one mm -hmm. so instead of being on 3.5 i move it to four and it, my, the needle will still go through my quarter inch foot um but it won't if you go to like on mine if i go to 4.5 it'll smash it 
if you use your normal foot like um if you use your universal foot like this one and you move your needle over so on my machine i would need move my needle over to 5.5 and that gives me my quarter inch i'd move it to six to get my scant quarter if i was using my general j foot my all-purpose foot um so i would i'd get a little piece of scrap of fabric basically a scant quarter is just under the quarter that's all that's all they mean okay did that help i hope so um anything else there don't ask how much of each color would uh i need for a five foot quote pop please oh okay now you're asking me to do quick maths so um <laughs> out of a fat quarter what's it depends <laughs> It's a little bit like how much is a piece of string. Um, it depends. Are you going to do three, three and a half inch squares like this? If you are, um, for five inch, you're probably going to need. Hang on. You're going to make me do the maths, aren't you? I think probably three, three meters, three meters of each color. If you're just going to do it in two colors. Because hang on, hang on. If you're going to do three and a half, um, so out of a fat quarter, I'd get four, which is one block, which is going to end up being 12 and a half. Um, five foot is 60, so you want five across by five. So you want 25 blocks in total, which is a hundred of those. Sorry, this is very dull. I'm doing the maths, and maths very quickly. Um, so I get four out of a fat quarter. So you want 25 fat quarters of each colour. It's 25 divided by four. Four into 20 goes... Oh, wow. No, you, you don't need that much. That's ridiculous. Three metres. Three and a half metres at a push, I think, for a five-foot bed quilt. Let me let me properly work it out. For you. Was that Dawn Norman? Or... Dawn Shonta. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. Um, sorry. I'm getting the Dawns muddled up think five meters, five meters of both is right is way too much because you've oh you've got quite a lot of scrap out of a fat quarter three three meters of each would do it definitely for a five foot quilt to make because they make 12 and a half inch blocks yeah three meters would be fine mm -hmm. still quite a lot of fabric mind <laughs> but that's a biggish quilt isn't it a five foot quilt that's that's a whopper that's a whopper <laughs> Any other questions, comments there, after you've just had to listen to me try and do maths in my head really quickly? <laughs> uh, Caroline says, don't ask me. <laughs> I always ask you, Caroline, you're my maths guru. <laughs> um, well, you do the addition quicker than I do, that's for sure. <laughs> there we go. Nearly there. Last couple, and then we're going to put this all together. Okay. Oh. Like you can see, I'm just put, taking the dog ears off. Just taking the dog ears off. This one. That one's only just. I can only just get that one out. Must have been a, not concentrating when I did my scant quarter on that one. Any other questions there, lovely? Uh, no. No? There we go. Okay. Dawn says she'll yeah. ring the shop next week and order. Okay, lovely. Yeah, no problem. I'll work it out for you. I'll work it out if you do three and a halves, exactly how much you'd need, okay? Um, rather than me trying to do it very quickly in my head like that, I'll make sure it's all right. And then, yeah, give us a shout and um, I can uh, work it out for you. Yeah. I can tell you what the right amount then. Right, there we go. Okay, so I've got my eight half square triangles and you can see that's all, that's all I've trimmed off them. Okay, it's basically just dog ears. Now this is the fun part. You have so I'm going to use four for one side, and four for the other. Okay, and they've got to be put together in a very certain way. And you can see this in my dodgy little picture to remind myself how to put them together. So, the top row, and I'm going to try and do this. To, I'm going to do it towards me and then turn it round for you. So like that. So my first set, you want them like that, so that this is a piece like that, and they are touching each other. And then the bottom ones are going to go oh, like that. Okay. So you're going to make a four patch like that. Okay. So we're going to put that together. It's really important that you put these together in a certain way. 
okay otherwise it just doesn't work all right and then the second one so you're going to make two and they're different is uh, okay hang on I've got to make this the right way around so there it's here hang on move that one down there a second you've got three that all go the same way one two and oh god let me if i turn this my drawing upside down make life so much easier oh look yeah <laughs> Uh, one two three like that and this one is going to go the other way so can you see that band is different okay now if I do that you can see can you see that they're going the wrong way it's one of those it's a complete opposite it's a complete mirror image okay so you do need to um I'll, I'll put this right if I put this little drawing like this you do need to make sure that they're the right way round, okay and you're going to make for each block you're going to make one like this and one like that okay so this is the bottom one i'm going to sew that one to that one that one to that one anybody everybody still with me are you all run away and gone what the hell is she talking about <laughs> uh karen says she says she's sorry late again but she loves the quilt behind you oh yeah it's beautiful isn't it it's uh, not made by me this is made by kath Lum, and she did an amazing job amazing job it's beautiful isn't it that's what we're doing today the hunters start here we go so we're going to iron these in opposite directions so that one going that way and that one going that way so that i can nest up that center so let me just double check I've got that right on my little drawing. There, there, yep, that's it. I do have to keep referring back to it because it does pick on my brain a little bit with this because I'm a very, very visual person when I'm when I'm quilting. Well, with anything, I'm very visual. Um, and it messes my pickles my brain sometimes. So I, I have like a, I have a little diagram that I can follow and keep making sure it's right. You go so one's there. I'll tell you what, I'm flipping boiling. Drew, for some random reason a minute ago, put the heating on in July. 45 minutes ago. And he was like 45 oh. minutes ago. He was like, it's freezing in here. I was like, A, it's July, and B, it's not freezing. I'm boiled. I know it's a bit rainy today, but oh very, very warm. Okay, there we go. So that's that one. Put together. Let's just iron that out like that. There we go. So that one is. I got to. I got to keep double checking myself. That one. So that's that one. And then we're going to put this one together. So this is facing you. Okay. So these two are matching, and then those two are not touching. Okay, like that. So we're going to put this one together. Have anybody there? Anybody having a chat? Uh, Jacqueline said, "Off, oh, love the off-camera comments." <laughs> just, just your mum calling you out. Yeah. <laughs> the daughter-in-law's over the other side with a little man trying to keep him occupied, to stop him crying or anything while we're on air. So. Uh, <laughs> Definitely go, got cold out then. But yeah, I can't believe you put that heating on. It was cold. The door was open. Ugh, boiled. So that, again, I'm doing them in opposite directions. And then that one's going to sit on like that. And we're going to sew these together. And we're nearly there, actually. It's, it's very, it is, this is easy as in the, um, the construction of it is easy. The actual piecing is, um, you know, it's half square triangles and two squares. There's nothing difficult here. For me, um, the <coughs> the difficulty for me would be in making sure that all those half square triangles were the right way around because otherwise you'd start putting it all together and your stars won't appear. And I'd be so sad. <laughs> there we go, nearly there. Okay, right. So, Depending on what size half square triangle you've used, so we've used three and a half, um, you want to measure this then, this little finished one, and you need a plain square 
of the same size. So these come out at six and a half. Okay, so this is my first set, and that's going to have a six and a half cream on the right hand side. So it, when you when it's done, this is facing you guys. It'll look like that. This is my second set. Okay, and that will have a dark one on the left hand side. So it's going to look like that. Okay. Now I'm going to leave that in shot just a second for you. So for those of you who have a, have a little go at this and can you know, want to look back and everything. OK, so this one, you can see you've got this piece here join in and two ones like that. Six and a half on the right hand side. This one, I've got these join in there. Those like that. And that's on the left hand side. I'm going to join those together. OK, so again, Make sure you're joining them up right. You're putting it on the right side because otherwise when you put your blocks together, it doesn't work. Tell me how I know that. Oh. Oh. I really need to get that straight plate. <laughs> straight stitch plate. It keeps catching. I don't know if I need to have my machine service. It's about a year. Oh, it's well over. Mind you, he went, went to the machine hospital recently, didn't he? Why aren't you, why won't you sew? Why are you, what are you catching? It's catching the very edge and chewing it up. And I do not want to have to start using a leader. I don't like them. I don't like using them. It's a pain in the bum. I'll go this way. I'll try doing it that way instead. So anybody, any other questions or comments there, Drake? Um, Karen said looks like half, half triangles with sh strips at the end at an angle to me. Sorry, say again? Looks like half triangles with half. strips at the, an angle to me. Uh, yes, it is. It's half square triangles with, with squares added on. Yes, but we're going to make a heart. We're going to make a hunter star when they all go together. Yeah. Um, and then Lizzie says, looking to buy a square ruler. What size would you recommend as a starter? Twelve and a half inch. Uh, um, I. If I've only got two, if I only could keep two rulers in my whole stash, it would be my six and a half by 24 inch ruler, my long ruler, and my 12 by 12. Um, you can pretty much do everything with those two rulers. You can't square up massive squares, but the majority of blocks are 12 and a half. They don't often get bigger than that. Um, but yeah, those would be my two. If you're starting out, those would be that would be my recommendation because you can cut much much small, smaller squares and all with it. You know, it's nice and um, nice and easy. So right, okay, I'm just gonna make sure I've got this right now. So I've got um, that up, that in my left hand side like that. Hang on, hang on, I got this wrong way around. Yep, there we go, like that. And then it's right because I'm trying to do everything upside down. <laughs> And that one's going to go like that. There we go. That's it, isn't it? Just double check that I've got that right. Yeah, that's it. So we're going to then stitch that one to that one. And like we said, it doesn't look like it's um, it's going to be a star at all at this point. You look at it and you're like, what? Um, nest that centre point, yeah? It's, at, it's the secondary patterns that happen. Here we go, all the way down. Any other questions, comments, Ella? Uh, Leslie just says thanks. That's it. Here we go. Okay. Right. So, you would make four of these, okay, to make one block. And then I've got to make sure I put them together right. Okay. So, is it that way? No, it's that way. There we go. Okay, can you see how that star there is starting to appear? I can see those there, which is this piece here. So imagine those two blocks there, like that, is these two here. Now, Kath, when she's done it, she's done little tiny half square triangles. Okay, so I think they're, let me have a little look. They would have been, oh, they'd have ended up at one and a half, so they're little. Okay, they are really little. 
and you would obviously need a lot more blocks this one is going to come out much much bigger I genuinely didn't have time to make more I made one block I didn't have time to make the other two but I'm hoping you can see where that hunter star is starting to come appear from okay there is nothing stopping you because this is going to be quite a big piece here doing this in different colors okay you could do these you know you could make these like um common people were saying now you could make these four patches or something you know and really mess around with it and, and get those secondary patterns but you can see it doesn't matter which way you turn it you're going to bring that in like that okay you've now got those two together it really doesn't matter which way round you bring it in um because you will end up with some that are together okay so as long you see that one doesn't work because that's got that way actually it's got to be the the alternate color there it is there <laughs> like that okay so that's a hundred, half a hunter star i need to make another two to get that full star in the middle but this was the joy of having cats <laughs> was that you can see that so if you imagine there's the the four there's the quarter uh, actually this one over here is probably easiest to see there's block one and block two three and four okay so she's got her block it's going to sit like that all right um mine's obviously just much bigger because i chose to do bigger bigger size half square triangles um and that's it any questions any comments or anything um, <coughs> no pauline says no? is that the one that sarah's making uh sarah jane no she's not doing a hunter star i don't know uh, is it a different sarah not us are you is it sarah that you're friends with are you talking is it a comment for somebody else I can't see it. no no don't know i'll no. read all the comments back later and see if i can work out what what the answer was for you okay um anything else there no no lovely lovely um sarah jane's back tomorrow and she's doing a fabric covered box um i will pop the challenge post onto our facebook page um as soon as i get back over to the shop and i will see you all there'll be no i was gonna say i'll see you monday i won't because i'll be watching uh my son and da daughter-in-law to be getting married <laughs> very excited for them um so there won't be a one o'clock on monday um because sarah and i will obviously be both at the wedding as well all the boys and and everything so we'll be back on tuesday next week um and it'll be sarah jane tuesday wednesday and then me on thursday because i'm babysitting little man while uh Rory and Cara have a have a couple of nights um, nights away, so it's like a mini honeymoon because they can't go away properly. So um, so yes, I will see you next Thursday. So yeah, in nearly a week before I see you. But take care. Have a lovely, lovely weekend, and we'll see you really soon. Bye.